Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror film, William Wood, Part 1, Road of the Dead. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins where two zombie virus outbreak survivors, Chalker and Barry, meet each other in a remote and low-populated area in Australia. They talk about their horrifying experience before they found each other. Yesterday, Chalker and his two brothers went into the woods to do pig hunting. During the night, they witnessed a meteor shower. After that, Chalker experienced difficulty sleeping. He eventually fell asleep, and when he woke up, he found his brother as dead as shit on the ground. He searches for his other brother and finds him already a zombie. He walks away, but his zombie brother keeps tracing his body smell, possibly looking for a tongue massage. Without a choice, he ends up shooting his zombie brother's kneecap. Meanwhile, Barry narrates that he ended up shooting his wife and daughter using a nail gun. The scene then flashes back to last night when Barry was working as a mechanic. After work, he comes home and eats dinner with his family. After that, Barry bids goodnight to his daughter and comes to bed with his sexy wife, ready for a two minutes game. However, the meteor shower is taking place. Barry's sister, Brooke, is in her studio. Coincidentally with the meteor shower, Brooke's model suddenly turns into a zombie. Brooke fights back with the zombie model before climbing to the ceiling. In response, the zombie model bites the assistant instead. Brooke puts the zombie model into a hook, which restrains the zombie model. She comes down, and the assistant, who is now a zombie, ends up grabbing her. She fights back and ends the assistant's shitty life, using a shitty shovel. She attempts to walk out of the studio, and a zombie awaits her outside. She calls Barry, reporting the zombie situation. She warns him that he needs to get his family in a safe place. Suddenly, Barry's daughter reports that there is an intruder inside their home. Barry goes to check it and finds a zombie eating food in their refrigerator. The zombie attacks him to the ground. His wife stabs the zombie with a knife and then an axe. Barry puts an end to the zombie's life. After that, he prepares his nail gun weapon and lets himself and his family wear a gas mask. He escorts his family to their car while they fight the zombie along the way. After that, they successfully drive away from their home. Morning comes, and two paramilitaries arrive in Brooke's studio. They kill the model zombie, and they restrain Brooke. After that, they forcibly get a blood sample from her. They test her blood using a substance, and the substance turns green, indicating that she's good. The paramilitaries then try to put her to sleep using a drug, but she pushes it away, so the paramilitary punches her, which instantly puts her to sleep. After that, they take her away from her studio. Meanwhile, Barry is driving with his family. Along the way, his daughter is having difficulty breathing, so she removes her mask. She suddenly coughs with blood and eventually turns into a zombie. Barry and his wife run out of the car out of fear. His wife removes her mask, and she also coughs blood but with diabetes. Barry puts her mask back, and they both return to the car. They drive away, and along the way, his wife says she feels that she is turning into a zombie. His wife then embraces him and suddenly becomes a zombie. The zombie wife chases him, and he hesitantly shoots his wife with the nail gun, instantly ending her diabetic life. He also kills his zombie daughter with the nail gun. He attempts to kill himself, but the nail gun is already out of bullets. In the meantime, Brooke wakes up in a small lab, completely tied up. She is beside other people, and there are zombies tied up in front of her. The mad scientist in a hazmat suit, called Dr. Psycho, enters and begins dancing to his favorite song. He begins his experiment by getting blood from a zombie. Shortly after, he injects the zombie blood into Brooke. Meanwhile, a bald survivor with a gun named Mr. Baldy finds Barry sitting in distress. Barry steals the gun from Mr. Baldy and attempts to shoot himself. The concerned Mr. Baldy punches him to prevent him from committing suicide. After that, Barry fights back against Mr. Baldy and they exchange blows. Zombies arrive and Mr. Baldy shoots the zombies with the gun while Barry bashes the zombies using a stone. Mr. Baldy then tricks Barry, allowing him to headbutt Barry, which instantly puts him to sleep. Barry eventually wakes up in Mr. Baldy's truck, and out of anger, he destroys the truck's window using a bat. He attempts to beat Mr. Baldy, but Mr. Baldy manages to calm him down. He then says that they need to get his sister in her studio. Along the way, they encounter a zombie, and Barry gets out to punch it. Mr. Baldy gets him back to the car, and hits the shitty zombie with the car. But along the way, the car stops out of nowhere. Barry goes down to fix it but to no avail. They suddenly hear a zombie scream and a gunshot from a distance. So they follow the sound and encounter Chalker, who instantly shoots Mr. Baldy right in the bald head, thinking that he is a zombie. Zombies approach them, and in response, they shoot at the smelly zombies. 
Back in the lab, the alarm attached to the other person rings, and Dr. Psycho electrocutes the person to wake him up. After that, he ruthlessly injects a large needle through the person's nose, so he can get blood from the person. Brooke gets alarmed and instantly agitated, thinking that she might suffer the same fate. But it only indicates that she needs another dosage of the zombie blood, so Dr. Psycho injects another zombie blood into her. In the meantime, Barry and Chalker wander through the woods. They eventually find other zombie survivors, Benny and Frank, who are camping inside a garage. Benny sees them and allows them to enter the garage. However, they need to pass through a group of zombies, so they run around the zombies while Benny and Frank shoot the other zombies. They manage to safely enter the garage, but a single zombie follows them inside. Fortunately, Benny shoots the zombie's head in time. Barry asks about the pickup truck outside, but Frank says it cannot go anywhere. Frank shows them all kinds of fuel stop being flammable, indicating that they cannot be used to fuel the car engine. This explains why Mr. Baldy's car suddenly malfunctioned earlier. They then get a beer in the freezer, and it turns out there is a zombie stored inside. The zombie appears to be breathing a smelly gas. The group drinks a beer and proceeds to eat some meat and bread. Benny lights up a match and throws it at the zombie blood on the floor. To their surprise, the zombie blood appears to be flammable. Barry gets the matches and sets the zombie's smelly breath on fire. They then think that they can use the zombie blood to fuel the car. So they test it, and the zombie blood works to run an engine. After they figure out how to run the pickup, they begin to gear up for their protection against the zombies. They plan on using the motor engine to drive back the pickup inside the garage. They throw meat outside to lure away the zombie. After that, the three walk out together to attach the pulling chain to the pickup, while Frank turns on the engine to pull it back. The pickup slowly gets dragged by the engine, and the three keep shooting at the zombies to prevent them from entering the garage. The engine eventually manages to drag the pickup inside, and they enter the garage with it. Unfortunately, a zombie holds Benny, and it manages to bite his nose. Benny then turns into a zombie, prompting Chalker to hit him with a hammer. After that, they extract blood from the zombie Benny to use it as fuel for their car. They then create metallic armor for the pickup, while Frank introduces his gas-powered harpoon invention. As they are finally prepared, they proceed to ride the pickup. Barry begins driving it, as he's planning to get Brooke for her studio. Meanwhile, Brooke wakes up, and she learns that she can now telepathically control the zombie, possibly because of Dr. Psycho's experimentation. Just then, the paramilitaries bring two zombies inside the lab. She then controls the zombie, manipulating it to fight back against the paramilitaries. But they still manage to restrain it. Dr. Psycho enters the lab and calls the paramilitaries a moron for beating the zombie. But the paramilitaries threaten to punch him before leaving the lab. In the meantime, the three survivors encounter zombies along the way. They make a stop to take another zombie for additional fuel. They continue driving again, but they make a stop. Chalker is taking a piss when a zombie appears out of the ground and attempts to bite his smelly sausage. Luckily, he rushes back inside the pickup. It is already turning dark, and Barry finds that the zombies have stopped providing fuel. Right then, he figures out that the zombies are using the fuel for themselves during the night, allowing them to be faster for their night hunting. Without fuel, they cannot drive the pickup, so they need to survive inside it for the rest of the night. Chalker asks Frank if this is the scariest situation for him. But Frank says it is nothing, compared to that time when his seven-year-old son died in his arms. Barry wonders why they did not turn into a zombie. Frank then says that according to the Bible, a star called Wormwood will fall from the sky at the end of the world, which will bring disease that will kill people. Frank believes it already happened during the meteor shower last night. In the end, the good people will go to heaven, and the bad people will go to hell. Those who are left on earth, like them, will get tested by God, and he believes that they are being tested by God at that moment. After that, they proceed to sleep, and Barry dreams about his family. He then wakes up and shoots at the zombie out of anger. Accidentally, the zombie lit up, which set their car on fire. Barry walks out of the pickup roof to remove the fire. Just then, zombies begin attacking him, and he defends himself from them. He manages to control the fire, and he goes back to the car. Frank tries to lock the roof door, but a zombie manages to bite him in the hand. He then gets a beer, and he lets everyone drink. Knowing that he will turn into a zombie, he instructs Barry to shoot, since it is a sin to kill himself. Barry hesitates, but he eventually obliges to end Frank's life. Morning comes, and Barry and Chalker begin driving again. Along the way, they lay down Frank's body on the ground, and they end Benny's life. After that, they continue their journey. They soon encounter the paramilitary's truck along the way. The paramilitary declares that Barry and Chalker have a negative blood type, 
which prevents them from becoming a zombie despite not wearing a gas mask. Barry says they are looking for his sister. The paramilitary says that they already have this sister. They instruct Barry to follow them, so he can finally reunite with his sister. In response, Barry hesitantly follows the paramilitary truck. Meanwhile, Brooke wakes up, finding Dr. Psycho is heavily asleep. She then controls the zombie to get a knife, which allows it to break free from the tie. The zombie attempts to bite Dr. Psycho, but he wakes up. In fear, he screams like a baby and frantically shoots the zombie. Just then, Brooke's alarm rings, indicating that Dr. Psycho needs to get blood from her. Dr. Psycho then gets the large needle and tries to stab it inside her nose, but the device gets unplugged. She controls the zombie, allowing it to go near Dr. Psycho and bite his hand. Out of desperation, he cuts his hand to prevent himself from turning into a zombie. He then attempts to cut Brooke in half, but he suddenly turns into a zombie. She controls him to make her escape from the tie. She then gets his gun and shoots him to death. She opens up the small lab door, and it turns out to be located behind the paramilitary truck. She then finds Barry and Chalker following the truck. So she jumps towards Barry's pickup, while the other paramilitary shoots at them. She successfully lands, and Barry speeds up the pickup, allowing them to get away from the paramilitaries. But the pickup stops since the zombie died. So Brooke calls the zombie toward them. The paramilitaries arrive and instantly shoot at Chalker. They'd rush back inside the pickup and proceed to drive away. Chalker suffers from the bullet wound, so Brooke puts pressure on it to stop the bleeding. The nasty two then feel attracted to each other's hormones despite the great pain. Chalker needs medical attention, so Brooke tells her brother to stop the pickup. They take Chalker out. Suddenly, Brooke gets a strange feeling. She fears that she is turning into a zombie, so she attempts to shoot herself. But the paramilitaries arrive, prompting her to shoot at them instead. The paramilitaries eventually manage to restrain them by locking their hands in the car. Brooke hides in the woods and commands the zombies to attack them. To lure her out, the paramilitaries remove her brother's nails. She comes out and voluntarily surrenders. The paramilitaries get a sword to execute Brooke. In response, Barry instructs Chalker to get the matches, since he plans to make the compressor explode. But Chalker refuses to follow his plan. Chalker lets the zombie bite him, so he can turn into a zombie. In that way, Brooke can control him. Chalker becomes a zombie soon, and he allows himself to escape from the chain by cutting his own hand. The paramilitaries are about to cut Brooke's head. Just then, Chalker gets the gun and begins shooting at them. The paramilitary leader is the only one who remains and manages to kill Chalker. The leader then shoots Brooke, and she falls to the ground with her fellow zombies. Barry throws a boomerang at the leader, which removes his mask, causing him to breathe the air. He's desperate to realize that he is about to turn into a zombie, so he asks Barry into a fistfight. They then exchange punches with each other, but the leader manages to beat the shit out of Barry. The leader restrains him, but he manages to pinch the leader's balls, making the leader suffer in pain. In response, the leader shoots at him and repeatedly punches his face. The leader shoots at the zombie, and its blood splatter on his face. Barry gets the match and sets the zombie blood on fire, burning the leader's face and making him scream in pain. Brooke, who somehow manages to be alive, rises up and orders the zombies to eat the leader. After that, Brooke and Barry ambush the paramilitary lab truck. In the end, the horde of zombies attacks the paramilitaries taking care of the truck. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.